Good, good evening, Elvin. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, I, 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 I'm really I'm very glad. Now we're talking to you. All day we've very been talking about you. Now we are talking to you. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Super. I'm really, really, really glad to see you. And I want to ask you about your paint. That's what fine. you do anything now. you want to any questions you like i'll uh, i'll see if i can give you at least a reasonable answer i'll try give you a good answer i i want i want ask you about uh, like you first time uh, take um, a pencil and uh, do start uh, painting? That's an excellent question. The, uh, when I was very young, my mother was German and she wanted her children to become culturally developed. So she sent me to piano lessons, you know, piano. And it was yeah. a disaster, a complete disaster. So she said, if we give up piano, you must go to art lessons. And it was just wonderful. Every week, Sveta, every week I would get on my bicycle. I was six years old and I would go to this Italian woman who would teach yeah. me watercolor and oil color. And remember, six, that is 70 years ago, seven zero years ago. She would teach me watercolor and, and oil color. There were other students there. And after I stayed with her for seven years, seven years. And then that was the last formal education I got. After that, I just painted on my own. And now, now finally, and you can see I'm not young anymore. My hair is silver and whatever. Now I try and paint every day. I'm painting every day. And I've wow. pictures, but and I've realized when you paint, it's not, it's just about the joy of painting. You must not paint thinking you have to sell this. You must not paint to think it has to look good on the wall. That's got nothing to do with it. We most of us never sell very much and what we are uh, only our good pictures hang on the wall but the privilege of painting is the joy of painting Sveta it's it's every day when I get up at six o'clock and I make coffee and I sit here on the easel and I look at this picture or I look or I, and I just add a little bit of paint and two hours just goes like this, just like this. Two hours is gone. Then I get ready for work and then I go to work. And the next day I'm back there, seven o'clock to nine o'clock, I will paint. And I've discovered if, if I paint every day, just slowly, 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 it's becoming easier. But this painting once a week, once a month, it doesn't work. You have to do it regularly. Remember when Ryan was an athlete, he was a great athlete, one of Africa's greatest athletes. He exercised yeah. every day. Now I try and paint every day. I've got some really nice colors. This is golden. Somebody was in England, Mish was in England, brought me some cadmium red light. I've got cadmium uh, yellow deep and I've got, I've got lots of paint and it's just sheer joy. So it's become very much a part of my life and I don't worry about selling, I don't worry. The only thing I'm going to try and do is make a calendar again, uh, a calendar which will go from January 2023 with at um, June 2024 and or even December, it'll be 18 paintings and uh, the best work I've done in the last year. And um, it'll hopefully 
bring a little bit of joy and happiness in the post-COVID period. COVID was a bad time everywhere. It doesn't mean to say it was worse here or worse there. Everywhere COVID was bad. We all yes, lose yeah. friends. We all lose family who die from COVID. I, I have no good memories of COVID, not at all. It, uh, but now that it's past, the joy of being able to travel, the joy of being able to uh, have the freedom to move around, it's giving me the energy to paint again. So that's what I plan to do. And if I don't sell any paintings in the next two years, Mafi problem, not, not worried. I, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't drive a, a smart car. Right. I, I just want to live a simple life with Sean and talk to my kids and plan a future maybe where I can paint every day, all day. But at the moment, I'm very pleased to be working. It's a big privilege to be working, to have work now while there's war in Ukraine and there's uh, crime in South Africa and there's people are struggling to put bread on the table. War and crime and economic collapse. These aren't good things. These are things which are making life a sort of survival game. So I'm really grateful for work for, and the privilege of painting and for the fact that Sean understands nearly all the time. <laughs> Not all the time. Wow. All the time. wow. And, and <laughs> these pictures, I'm now, I'm painting on canvas at the moment. So if I want to take this picture back, I just have to take the staples out and then I can roll it up and I can put it yes, over my arm and I can fly home. So this big picture, which is uh, flowers, and it's 180 by 140, really nice. can just be rolled up. And in South Africa, uh, it can be put back on a wooden frame and it can go on the wall. Of course, not too many walls have place for a picture like this, but I'll find one of my children who has a wall. I don't often paint like this. And it's been, I've been working on this picture, the big one behind me for months now, every time, let me tell you a little secret. I've realized in painting, perspective, not important. Uh, the only yeah. thing that's important is color and contrast. So if I put red and green and yellow and white and pink and mauve, it brings out contrast and then you and if you put them all together orange blue green yellow pink white it's like when the symphony is playing and everybody is making some sort of sound and it comes together and it sounds good and it looks good so this this is basically, it doesn't matter the subject. This is a symphony of color. This is like a musical symphony. And yeah, we have white and maybe that's the violins. And yeah, we have orange and maybe that's the, uh, the piano. And yeah, we have blue and maybe that's the drums. And in the background, we have the white and maybe that's the choir, but it all comes together to make a nice sound and a good visual. This is, this is, it's, it's good to look at. I'm trying to keep away from the dark colors. The dark colors of, uh, I don't have black on my palette. If I want a dark color, I will use mauve and blue and it'd give me a dark shade for a shadow because sometimes you need to have something plain in the background, like around here, but mainly, all about color. So, and the other thing is, 
I've also realized I can put anything in the pictures. You know, that's the one thing about getting older, uh, Sveta. I, I don't yeah. have to worry about if I want to put a church in the picture and on top of the church, I want to put somebody playing the violin, a beautiful woman playing the violin. That's great because everybody would like to see a beautiful woman playing the violin on top of a church. It brings happiness, especially if she plays it well. And, and then I want to put uh, on, the, uh, on the building next door, I want to put a piano with some happy guy playing the piano. Maybe he's singing. You know, this is giving, this is not in any picture other than in my mind, but it's giving the picture character. It's giving the picture a story. Why is the you say where, where the, the church? Maybe it's a sad, <clears throat> but maybe it's a wedding. One can think maybe it's a wedding in the church. Maybe <coughs> <coughs> it's just a celebration. So basically, what I'm trying to say is color is like a celebration. And believe me, especially, you know, Sean, and my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine. They have very little to celebrate at the moment. There's, it's this war, you, you live in it. We live outside of it. And living outside of it, we don't really understand how it is to be in it, but we know it's awful. I know from, strangely, <clears throat> my mother used to tell me about how difficult it was for family in Germany during the war. And uh, it's war is war. It's, it's always just sad and not good. And uh, one sort of prays that this situation will get better, but let's get back to the painting. So at the moment, I, um, I try and paint every day. I don't mind what I paint. I'm trying to have two or three pictures on at the same time. One flowers, one playing music. I'm trying portraits of young women because uh, I, about 30 years ago, drew this picture of a young woman and it really yes. worked well. It was like, it was like somebody playing golf and suddenly the, the, the ball went up and it fell straight into the hole, one shot. And that was the picture I drew of this young woman 30 years ago, 1993. Now, I think, you know, you can't only have one picture of this. So now I'm redrawing her and I'm putting her in a yellow dress. I'm putting her in a white dress. I'm putting her in a green dress. I'm making her, her, her hair black. I'm making it blonde. I'm making it red. I'm making her lips dark. I'm making them light. But it's the same woman every time, just giving another side to maybe her personality. And it's the first time, the first time ever that I've tried to paint the same picture twice or to paint the same picture 30 years after I painted the original picture, which I fortunately kept. So I've also realized that one can, one can take a painting which worked well, and one can add maybe, maybe a donkey cart, maybe, uh, maybe clouds, maybe a airplane, maybe, Maybe I can add some children playing. That's a new theme too. Children playing um, football. But children in paintings bring happiness. If you've got children playing musical instruments and they're marching in a row and they're followed by a whole lot of ducks. I mean, this is happiness and so I'm trying to let my mind just get wider and to let all these new images in. 
And at the same yes. time, I, we have just been to a, 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 a meeting in Dubai and I had to sit through lectures for eight hours. We're running out of time, I'll be quick. But in those eight hours, I, I did a lot of drawing, a little sketches which will eventually become yes. paintings because I do the sketch, then I make a copy for, for rough work. I put the sketch in a file. So maybe one day, one of my children will say, nice sketch, I'll frame it. But at the moment, all my sketches are ideas for new paintings. Anyway. What color? What color you like more? Uh, it's well, a really open good color. It's you know, yeah. That's an excellent question because, you know, when I was, I remember the day that my art teacher said, we are going to leave watercolors and we are going to give, start oil colors. And she gave me a list of colors to get. And now I've, cut, I've made that list even shorter. I no longer use burnt sienna. I no longer use Van Dijk Brown. I no longer use lamp black. I only use cadmium red light, pyrrole red, emerald green, titanium white, cobalt blue, tallo blue or Prussian blue. Prussian blue is my best choice, but it's expensive and we can't always get it. And I use my yellows, the yellows are special. I use cadmium red deep, I mean cadmium, cadmium yes. yellow deep. Then I use uh, Indian yellow, you must try it, Indian yellow gives a, a lovely sort of extra sheen. You rub it on afterwards. It's like, um, it's a transparent color and it's, it's like permanent rose. Permanent rose and Indian yellow, if you don't know them, re write them down. They give something extra to, to a painting. So those are the colors. They're all the colors, I, I, I use a cadmium orange, I like the cadmiums, but they, they're incredibly expensive. But I've discovered, you know, a few makes. There's a, a, a French make called Pebio, which I use a lot. And there's Utrecht, which is American. And uh, of course, this golden paint is costing me an absolute fortune. And although mm -hmm. uh, I still use it and I buy tubes, it's, um, <laughs> Sean tells me I'm on spending on food, which is true, but also for painting. Food is uh, necessary for life, but painting is also necessary for life. So I'm, I'm limiting my palette to, to light colors. Yeah. I didn't mention yellow ochre that I use. I like magenta because if you can mix it with white, you can get various shades. And then if you add a little bit of blue, you can get a little uh, something like mauve. And I think a light mauve. If you, I remember, um, Rainey showed me a picture of the lavender flowers in France, which you painted. Now that's a lovely mauve. That's what I call a really beautiful mauve. Because I, I recall they, these flowers, it's in Southern France and it's always in the summer. So I have uh, some sentiment for mauve. And then, so I've added that, but basically I'm, I'm removing all the dark colors. Some, it's, it's uh, you need to have shade. It helps you create contrast, but it's limited. And my shade is usually, uh, I will use uh, Prussian blue or Thalo blue. Okay. No, or something like that. So that that's my palette, and Thank I've also discovered. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, Idea, Elvin, you like like uh, Idea go to uh, to you, like you sit and start new uh, uh, canvas. Thank you, Sveta. 
Thank you. We, we should do it again. And all about screen time and violence, the, the finer things like music. You know, these are what keeps people energized. These things give people energy. So I find yeah. that bright colors give me energy. When I think I put on Strauss and, and Mozart and, and I like to hear the singers, sopranos, the operas, the operettas. YouTube is full of them. So when I get up in the morning, I will put on the YouTube and I will choose an opera or I will choose a, a symphony or I will choose a collection of works from, from Andre Rue, the Dutch musician. And this, this is just life at its best. You paint, you have good coffee, you, you afterwards you need to stop because you need to go to work but you're happy that you've done something on canvas and you know that to, the following day you'll be able to pick it up right there and in within minutes you'll be back to where you are.